Okay, so my this channel is supposed to be mainly on hardware, and I do have a software channel. We're going to get a little bit in software here. We're going to be looking at BusyBox Day and upgrading it on a device. I'm going to be doing it on the Pogo Plug, which I've already started this series on. Uh, but what I'm about to show you kind of, you know, will work for many different um, devices. Uh, most likely, if you have a Linux device uh, that is a something small, like an IoT device, a router, a modem, or something along those lines, it probably already has BusyBox on it, but in many cases, it's gonna be a very slim down version of BusyBox. So what is BusyBox? BusyBox is a uh, binary tool that contains, uh, a binary executable that contains a bunch of basic tools that you will use on a Linux system, basically all your core tools. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna open up a web browser here, and I'm going to go to uh, just busybox.net. So busybox.net is the homepage for BusyBox. And in some devices, like uh, a lot of uh, Android phones, they're either going to have uh, BusyBox or a lot of new ones have ToyBox, which is similar, different license. It's a newer thing. N not newer as in BusyBox isn't being developed anymore, but newer as in it's it's uh, not it hasn't been around as long as BusyBox. Anyway, busybox.net, off to the left here, uh, you have download binary in here go to whatever the newest version is at this point, and they have binaries for all these different processor types. And if we go back over here to our um, Pogo plug, and again, I showed you in the last video, name dash, uh, uname dash A will show us that we're running ARM version five. Going back to the busy box uh, right here, you can see that there is a version for that. So all you have to do is download that binary. It's only 1.1 megabytes. And in this case, again, you know, I can show you that we have plenty of space. We have 85 megabytes left on this. And I've actually already put an upgrade copy of BusyBox on this device. But I'm gonna walk you through the steps of how I did that. So if I was to run BusyBox right now, just run BusyBox, it lists out all the programs that are built into this binary of BusyBox. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Zcat, you've got Wget, uh, you got um, unzip, unzip, you've got your new uname. So basically all the, the major tools, the main tools you're gonna be using on this system are all built in into here. Your mount command is uh, probably built into this. Uh, your chur root, if you wanna be able to chur root later on, you're changing groups, changing owners, changing passwords. Um, so all this stuff. Uh, but again, when I first got this Pogo plug, it had a lot of uh, tools built in. Some of them only have like five of these tools built in. They're trying to save room because a lot of routers might only have two megabytes of space total on their flash. Um, so they, they strip it down, but we have plenty of room. So we're gonna use the full thing. And so the original one probably had maybe this many tools on it. I couldn't even tell you what tools they were, but about that many. So we can install a lot more just by copying this binary over. And of course we have wget because it's built into BusyBox already. So it was already on this device. The problem with a lot of these tools is that they are slimmed down versions. So even though we have wget, it's not the full version of wget you might be used to on a desktop Linux box. Um, and one of the things it's missing is its capability to, uh, uh, work with uh, HTTPS. It doesn't work with SSL certificates. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an option to ignore. I don't think there is. The full version of wget has an option to ignore certificates. I'm not seeing that option in here. So if I wanted to download BusyBox from the BusyBox website here, I, I couldn't because even if I remove this S and put the URL, it's going to forward to be encrypted, which is a good thing but not so much for downloading directly to our device here. Um, of course, you can always get full binaries of wget, uh, you know, the GNU binary uh, for wget or C curl, or yeah, C or curl, blah. Um, but uh, what we have right now, we don't have the ability, at least not with this wget, to d download it directly. So what I have done is I download it to my computer and I already have a web server running on my desktop computer, so I just wget it from there. And uh, in a future video, uh, uh, with, with BusyBox, you also have an HTTP daemon. Uh, so you can uh, start up, spin up a service of a web server with BusyBox. Uh, very easy to do. So you can do that on your desktop as well. Anyway, 
get the file on your desktop computer and then transfer it over again. I just use W get to pull it from my desktop. But instead of bringing it straight to, if we were to do where is, should be, okay, where is is not installed on this system. What about locate? Nope. Anyway, busybox is in uh, our bin folder. So if I go to bin, CD bin, and I list out busybox, you can see it's here. And again, this is the version I've already downloaded. Um, we don't want to overwrite that just yet because if we mess up that binary, our system's going to kind of stop working since it's kind of our shell that we're working in right now is part of busybox. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go to my temp directory and in here I would wget and download that binary. So actually let me go ahead and go back to my web browser here. Let me go to my local host here. And I thought I already had the image here. Let's go ahead and download it. I'm going to go, I wasn't going to go through the, the, the process, but I'm going to do that anyway. So I'm going to say save link as. So I'm downloading the ARM5 because that's what my system is. If you're doing something on a different device, you're going to want to download the proper one for that device. And I'm going to put that inside my web directory here. And I can go here, refresh this, and there we can see it. I'm going to copy this. Well, copying that link won't really work because I'm at localhost. But I know that my desktop computer is 192.168.1.150. Metal X 1000 is the name of the folder. And the file is called busybox arm v5l. Boom. So I've downloaded that. Now, if you run busybox at this point, obviously you're still running the one that's installed in the bin directory. And if you try doing dot slash, it's not going to work because we haven't given permission to. So we're going to say change mod plus X to make it executable. So now at this point, I can say dot slash busybox and it will run. Do that before you put it in your bin folder. Because if you overwrite the original and, and maybe even make a backup copy of the original for if just in case. Um, but at this point, you can go um, move this busy box to bin busy box. And it'll be overwritten. And at this point, when you run busy box, it will now be running that one from the bin folder that you just replaced. Now, we still need to link stuff. So a lot of the, the tools are, were already linked, but they not all of them are because we just added a bunch of tools. So what does that mean? So let's say we wanted to use the DD command, for example. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do DD until it's linked. If I press that, it would say, I've already done this, it would say program not found. So what I would have to do is either type in busybox DD to run it, or I would go into my bin folder here. I could link it. I would go ln-s to make a symbolic link. And I'm going to give it the full path to my busybox binary. And then I would say dd. And it's going to tell me the story exists because I've already done this on this system. Uh, it says file exists. But what that would do is create a file, a link, called dd inside this directory. Okay. So we want to do that for all of our busybox um, programs, all of these up here. So we don't have to type busybox to run them. We just type the command. Um, and the way we can do this, if I type in, again, busybox right here, at the top of this version of busybox, this compile of it, you can see there's two commands. The install, I haven't tried that yet. That might be doing what I'm about to do manually. I haven't looked into that yet. Um, but if we just do list, so I can go busybox dash dash, oops, dash dash list and hit enter, it gives us that same list just, you know, each command on its own line. So what we can do, and I'm going to show you it this way, because even though I think that install option will do the install, not all versions of, of BusyBox will necessarily have that, although our whole point is that we're replacing it with a fuller version. But <laughs> the way you manually would do this is you would list out the, the BusyBox list, and I'm going to put it in a while loop, and I'm going to create a variable called C. So that C is just for a command. And I'm going to echo it out just so we have some sort of output. Don't really need that part of it, but we'll put it in there anyway. And then we're going to loop, and for each command, we're going to run our link command. 
I'm going to do that now, but it's going to tell me that these files all already exist because I've already done this. Again, there's a link in the description of this video to all my notes on this and all this information as well as the links to the binaries, where to put it and how to, in this command, are all in there. So check out the link in the description. Um, so there you go. And at that point, now if I was to be in my bin folder here, I can list out and you can see all these, what appear to be binaries, uh, individual binary files, but you notice they're all just links to this binary here. So all these commands are actually in this 1.1 megabyte file, which is great because with these tools, if you are familiar with the Linux shell, there's really, really no limitations. All your major tools are gonna to be right here or tools you need to get them. So that is it. That is installing BusyBox. And again, I'm doing this on the Pogo Plug mobile version four, um, but you can do this on any ARM device. Now. I have done a video and I'll link it at the end of this video in the past where I have had devices. So again, if I DF dash H, you can see that I have plenty of room, plenty of room. I have almost 85 megabytes free on this, um, on this device. Again, I have worked with uh, devices that don't have any, um, any, any room left. They might have you know, two megabytes or eight megabytes, but it's all used up and they might have BusyBox on there, but it's not a full version. So how can I get, I need that one tool. Maybe I want to use Chirrut, although I don't know where you'd be Chirruting to unless you have external storage somewhere, but you have it and that's not built in. Or maybe you want to start up a web server with HTTPD and it's not in the version of BusyBox. So how do you get this version of BusyBox onto a device like that? Well, in a lot of cases, so if I do mount here, you'll even see, uh, here's an example right here. So this system is set up like this, and a lot of ARM devices do this. Your temp folder is actually a temp file system, which is most likely running in RAM. And so, for example, I in the video that I'll link at the end of this video, I had a wall outlet that controlled lights that was running Linux. There was no room left on the flash for me to copy over this full version of BusyBox. There wasn't 1.1 megabytes of space for me to put it. So what I would do is I would put it in this temp folder, which is basically running in RAM, and the thing had 32 megabytes of, of RAM. And I was able to get BusyBox running there. Downside of this, when you reboot the device, all that's removed. Um, so... It's a temporary fix, but it works. Although if there was a little teeny tiny space left on the root flash, you can always add to your startup script to download the binary to the temporary folder, make it um, uh, uh, executable, link all the stuff, and then add it to your path for your path executables. So for example, I'll just do this here. I'll go to my temp folder and I'll make a folder called bin inside my temp folder. So again, this, it still would be temporary and would be lost, but you can write a script that makes this directory. And so you can see I have this. And what I could do is I could copy from my root bin busy box to my temp bin. I can move into that temp bin, or I'm already in temp. I can make that executable. My while I'll loop this here. So now I have that binary, all the links inside this folder. And then again, this is with a startup script. This is just theoretically, but you could obviously, it's not just theoretical, you could do it. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I gonna do next? Oh, and then if I echo out path, you can see my path uh, directories. I could add to path, so I could say path equals uh, temp forward slash bin colon dollar sign path. And again, I'm getting into, I know this is my hardware channel and I'm getting into software stuff. If you're familiar with Linux and how Linux works or any Unix type system or Unix like system, um, you're, you're familiar with this. I'm not, I shouldn't be telling you anything new. If this is over your head, this, this part of the video isn't for you. Get a little more basic grip on operating systems in general. Uh, but I'll hit enter and now if I echo out, uh, echo out, my path, you can see that would be there. 
So basically you add those few commands, download the file, put it in the, your temp folder, and you'll be running it all out of RAM even though you don't have space on your root directory. I feel like I'm getting off topic here. I hope that makes sense. Again, I'll have a link at the end of this video where I actually do something similar to this on a device and maybe that will explain it better. But I do thank you for watching. I hope this video wasn't too boring. If so, then I guess it just wasn't for you. Uh, this is my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. As always, I thank you for watching. Also check out my Patreon page. There should be a link to that at the end of this video. As always, I hope that you have a great day.